lovers, and welcome to the Liberty Mike podcast, broadcasting from an undisclosed location in the heart of Dixon. I am Michael, and I am here once again with Liberty Larry. How's it going? Doing all right. How about you? Pretty good. So I was I, I was glad to hear that you declare the end to COVID oh, in the last podcast. Thank you. I didn't uh, declare an end to COVID. I declared an end to the pandemic. Pandemic. Fair enough. Yes. Well, that's, uh, I've been waiting on someone to do this, so like, I'm super excited now. I like, appreciate I can, <laughs> I, I can leave the house, and I can go do stuff again. It's amazing, man. Yeah, exactly. I, no more masks, no, no more mandates. Masks. Yeah, no. I was, I was excited. just unnecessary now. Yeah, I was excited to hear it, man. Yeah. <laughs> I, and, um, and the UK followed suit. The Actually, yeah, the did. UK did that first, although I think it went into effect yesterday. Yeah, so, so. trendsetter, man. Yeah. They, they must have listened to our podcast or your podcast yeah. and was like, you know what? <laughs> old, He's right. <laughs> old Bojo <laughs> didn't have anything to do with his numbers being in the tank or uh, yeah. you know, <laughs> hanging on to power in uh, the UK for dear life. Yeah. Um, certainly that's not it. No, no. He listened to the Liberty Mike podcast and was He's like, like you know that what? guy makes a good point. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> So he's like, ah, oh, yeah, deaths are down. Vaccines aren't working. Yeah, yeah. Nothing we can do. Oh, well. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> Let's just open it up. Yeah. Well, I, and, you know, like I said there, um, the all these governments have put themselves in a position where they have to be seen as doing something. Yeah. They, they claim to have the power to do something to stop this, and so they have to be seen as doing something. Yeah. And then some of them are like, yeah, we're done doing stuff. Yeah. Because all of you can see that we can't do anything. Well, exactly. <laughs> you know, why piss you off just to, you know, well, look like something's and happening? especially with elections coming up, like, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a lot more of that. Like, because it's, I don't I, know. We'll see. This country has been weird about it, like, much slower on the uptake. I, yeah. I have been generally disappointed in Americans' reaction to well, the I, lockdowns. And I would mandates definitely and agree so with that, but I think that as we get closer to elections, and it's becoming painfully clear that the, st- that the stuff we've been doing isn't working. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I think you're going to see some shifting there. Well, maybe I mean, not completely. Thing, I mean, though, you're going to have you're going to have a percentage of people who are just bought in, yeah. and but that percentage ain't the majority. Well, I mean, that's kind of the issue here is that it is it's hyper political here. Yeah, and so if you are opposed to the mandates, then you're a Republican. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I that I that's, that's obviously not the case, but that's. That's how you're portrayed. Yeah, and yeah. and that's probably how people think of themselves that are in in some camps as well. Yeah. So, um, and some people are happy about that, and some people aren't. And there are some people that will do anything in their power to not be a Republican. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, you know those hated Republicans, and so they'll go along with this and ignore what's right in front of them, yeah. all the way, all the way there, oh. all the way to the to the camps, <laughs> all the way into the camps. Yeah. yeah. Well, so, I hope not. I like to be more of an optimist than that. But no, I, and I think it's fair too. I think that there's enough people that. But in terms of the political activity, I still think that the that the Democrats are going to continue to um, alienate people that haven't been and demonize people that haven't been vaccinated and don't wear masks and so forth as being the killers of all the rest of them. Yeah. And, it, you know, it's it's really easy to um, create an other in that way. We've seen it done over and over again in history. Yeah. And and well, the left has mostly won the culture war. That's the big scary thing for me is, is you're exactly right. Like over and over in history, this is kind of how these things play out is mm-hmm. you pit one group against the other. Yeah. And, and, you know, one group's the out group and the other group's the in group. Mm-hmm. And you've got that with the vaccine. Like, I mean, you absolutely have a, the, if you haven't taken the vaccine, you're in the out group. Yeah. Um, and you're trying to kill grandma. And yeah. And, and you're, well, and you're, you're a killer. You're looked at as less than human. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, and you look at the way the left treats people who aren't vaccinated. I say the left, but in general, it mm-hmm. is the left, mm-hmm. um, treats people who aren't vaccinated. They do treat them less than human. Yeah. Like it's, there's, there's no sympathy or no, no 
it's just it's and that's that's how you end up down the dangerous road. Yeah, and I don't know how it works in other countries, particularly, um, but in this country, it plays into the idea that the Republicans don't care about people. Yeah, they don't care about poor people. They don't care about sick people. They don't care about old people. They don't care about people. You're on your own. That's the idea of a Republican anyway. Yeah, and so um, you know, pushing the idea that. Um, these people that aren't being vaccinated, it's because they don't care about anybody and they're willing to kill you all just for their, their own sense of principle or whatever. Yeah. It just plays into the, the image, the evil image of the right that's already out there. Yeah, absolutely. So, and speaking of all of that, just so we're going to talk about Russia and Ukraine tonight, obviously. <laughs> and I just want people to kind of, I wanted to mention something at the beginning before we dive into all of that tonight mm -hmm. that like Biden's numbers are in the tank. Like it, he is in trouble polling wise. Like I saw something yesterday saying that he was polling worse than Trump at this part. Of oh this, yeah. Yeah. Which, By a good bit actually. Yeah. Which is like, which is bad because like, I mean, Trump was like really mm -hmm. bad in the polls, like the whole time. Like he never had strong polling numbers. Yeah. Cause half um, the country hated him. Well, yeah. And, and you know, whatever, like that's fine. Half the country doesn't hate Biden. Yeah. Well, but nobody's happy with him. But nobody's happy with him. And the reason for that. I think largely is due to um, economics here at home. I mean, mm -hmm. you've got inflation, you've got all of this this stuff going on, and that's that's the reason why his numbers are in the tank. But the the thing I want people to kind of consider here while we talk about Russia and Ukraine and what's going on on the other side of the world is that you know presidents who have bad polling numbers tend to like to go to war. Yeah, let me focus you on something outside. Yeah, l let me look. Yeah, exactly. Don't pay Just, attention to what's going on here. Yeah. Look at it over there. And, you know, I don't know if it would work in this scenario or not. I actually tend to believe it wouldn't. I mean, I don't think people really want us to go to war or, or to send troops anywhere right now. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, it's 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 definitely a play, a card that I'm afraid is fixing to get played. Yeah. Well, I hope you're wrong. Before we get into that, too, though, you've heard about the um, stealth Omicron? Yes, I saw something <laughs> vaguely. Like, I saw, like, a headline yesterday or something and just laughed. Like, yeah, I, I, I didn't, didn't see. My first thought was, yes, the disease so bad, you don't even know you have it. <laughs> you <know? Right>. like, <laughs> but I, I guess they mean that it's harder to detect in the testing or stuff. That's, I, I would assume that, I hope that's what they're getting yeah. at. Like, um, but got to keep up the fear. So the question is, well, is it just as mild as Omicron? Well, we don't know yet. We don't mm. know. Well, I, I saw okay. something Whatever. the other day, and it was some kind of fear piece where they were trying to ratchet up fear, where they were talking mm. about, you know, all the um, all the conditions are right for the next variant and a, a worse variant to yeah. come from this. And, and the flu rona, don't forget the flu rona. <laughs> yeah, and few, yeah, exactly. Okay. So... Um, um, no, the fear is definitely being pushed hard right now. Mm -hmm. But that's, I mean, but I think that's because we're nearing the end here. Like, yeah. like for real nearing the end. So. Yeah. Well, I, um, I actually heard a bit on No Agenda uh, today. Um, they were playing some clips from a, uh, a registered nurse who ha is a specialty in like critical care and um, ventilators. Uh, she's also a flight nurse, which means like on the helicopters and whatever. Yeah. But um and and actually, we'd heard from her before on that show. Uh, she was the one that, that very early on was talking about how the treatments that they were doing in the hospital was killing people. Yeah. Um, but in in this case, uh, well, the part that I wanted to mention, you know, as long as we're, we're stoking fear, um, <laughs> is that she said, uh, um, I transported my first 10-year-old with a heart attack the right. other day. Yeah. And she said, I had to argue with the doctor about it, and, you know, because he said 10-year-olds don't have heart attacks. Yeah. <laughs> and um, she got him to hook him up to the kid up to a 12-lead EKG, and it showed a particular kind of myocardial infarction called uh, STEMI. Um, and, uh, and he said, well, that can't be right. This, this doesn't happen. And she was like, well, he got vaccinated. Well, two days ago or whatever. It's happening. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> I mean, you're, um, you're literally watching it happen. Like, yeah. So this is, um, you know, this is just a correlation. Uh, yeah. I, I can't say, and neither kid could she really with certainty that the, yeah. the vaccine was the cause, but 
Yeah. Well, it's something I hear more and more is, you know, people having heart issues that, mm-hmm. that, that shouldn't be. Yeah. You know. Well, um, you know, that's certainly what a doctor that I was talking to about it said is that, yeah. that uh, you know, clotting issues um, is a big part of it and, yeah. uh, you know, various uh, other um, cardiac issues yeah. with um, – swelling or edema and you know so anyway um it's, this wasn't really supposed to be a corona podcast but you just can't avoid it yeah it's still I mean, it's, so much of a part of what is affecting us on a on a daily basis yeah um and for now hopefully we're only hopefully like i say you declared the end i hope we're there yeah no <laughs> we are i i declared it exactly but it, there's so, no question now yeah no no question no again. question now <laughs> Um, and actually, uh, again, uh, you know, we're just going to keep teasing the Russia Ukraine thing. Uh, <laughs> so you're talking about the economic issues at home. Yeah. Um, I uh, saw an article today, or I read an article today uh, that was criticizing Biden because he was supposed to be this, you know, great um, environmentalist president and and shut down all the um, those terrible, you know, energy producers. Yeah. We'll say, uh, <laughs> but you know the fossil fuel industry, and and he did, of course, shut down the Keystone Pipeline, yeah. um, and there was a moratorium on uh, on new drilling and on federal lands and all kinds of stuff like that. Um, but the report was that well, he's saying the one thing and he's doing another because um, a year into the Biden administration, they had sold leases for um, exploration and exploitation of fossil fuels on federal lands, like more times than yeah. the Trump administration did in its first year. Oh, wow. Or maybe it was the Trump administration did in its last year. I can't remember. Yeah. Um, but, Either way. But year to year, anyway, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the the Biden administration had done more leasing for fossil fuel exploitation. Yeah. And they were leasing off smaller parcels of land, so in total land area, it was less than the Trump administration. But anyway, um, all these environmentalists are, are going nuts over this and complaining and saying he was supposed to shut all this stuff down and yeah. um and he hasn't done that in fact he's he's you know seems to be very friendly with the fossil fuel industry and so forth and i thought um i don't know that people realize just how much money the how much revenue is generated for the US government by doing exactly this yeah so there's a whole lot of this country that's technically owned by the federal government yeah. and uh they make quite a bit of money leasing this land for um for resource exploitation including uh timber and um various mineral rights and uh and of course fossil fuel um exploration and extraction uh, yeah. as well and so all these <laughs> like uh, nature preserves and so forth it's actually all fair game yeah all right. yeah um it's not as protected as you might think because it's in the hands of the federal government. In fact, it would probably be better protected in private hands because they would actually care if it lasted. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The government's got no no concern with that. Yeah. Um, but then the other part of that is I was like, you know, these people must not understand anything about economics because what <laughs> what they're asking for at this point in time, yeah. essentially, is that... Um, the U.S. government spend more than it ever has spent before. Yeah. Uh, cut off one of uh, its big revenue sources yeah. um, outside of taxes. Yeah. Uh, so you know, s- stop gathering revenue in that way, yeah. um, collecting revenue in that way, and uh, turn off an industry um, that, when turned off, will raise energy prices, and of course, energy prices affect prices of. Everything. Everything else. I mean, you want to talk about the most vital inner or vital, um, you know, groups like energy is it? Like, I mean, yeah. you've got to have. I mean, there's we're not there as far as any type of renewable mm-hmm. is taking over. Like, yeah. so the idea that you're just going to cut off the energy we have is just that's just crazy talk. Yeah, energy, transportation, and communication. Those are the biggest things that. Yeah, that have to keep running. Well, and energy and transportation kind of play together. <laughs> yeah, like it's hard well, to have and communication tra- too. You need the electricity. Well, yeah, yeah, exactly. So yeah, we're like, not sending smoke signals anymore. Exactly. And even that has to do with energy because you got to burn. Still got to burn something. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. so I just thought they're just like trying to create this perfect storm where 
um, energy prices go up because we we cut off an energy the primary energy source. Yeah. Um, and at the same time, you've reduced government revenue while spending more government money than ever before. I don't know. It just it it, it doesn't made me it's, laugh. It's as not was, well thought out. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Um, so, so <laughs> I guess into our main topic now. Yeah. Um, I. I don't know how to approach this problem. Let's start with Kazakhstan. Okay. Um, because that is essentially over. Uh, so how did that end? Because I was following that right up until I wasn't. Um, okay. Well, uh, there, there appears to have been a coup attempt in Kazakhstan. Yeah. Um, it has all the markings of a color revolution, but who really knows? Yeah. Well, I'm sure there are people that really know. but Well, and well, when you say color revolution, exactly what does that mean? Um, Meaning a, a U.S. planned and sp- like intelligence, U.S. intelligence planned and sponsored attempt to overthrow the government. Gotcha. Right. Cool. Um, like, like we did in Ukraine. Actually, yeah. All right. Okay. <laughs> Twice. Yeah. I mean, I know. So we do that all over the place. I in didn't, Georgia, I didn't and, realize yeah. that was the term for it. So color revolution yeah. is when we go in and and overthrow and mm-hmm. and change the personnel. Yeah, and it. it, it <laughs> The name comes from the fact that that's how they're coded, essentially, is, you know, the Orange Revolution and the Rose Revolution and the, you know, et cetera. Yeah. Okay. So, um, at any rate, the, you know, it had the markings of a color revolution in, and, and it may have not started with that. Yeah. Um, it may have actually started with the end of these subsidies on energies. On energy. See, that's what the reporting I had saw was that the protest and everything was over energy costs. Mm-hmm. Well, the but very quickly the government announced that they would continue the subsidies. Yeah. So it. So they gave in. Yeah, it alleviated that problem, and the protests still got worse and more violent. Yeah. And the other part of it, though, is that there were some apparently well-organized groups that knew right where to attack to expand their arsenal. Um, there were heavy weapons in use from the beginning. It's like yeah. somebody prepared some groups that were involved in this to to really make a real push to overthrow the government in a violent way. Yeah. Okay. So, um, and the way that ended, and, and you may remember all the talk about, uh, well, you know, the... Russia then went into Kazakhstan um, to help put down the, the the revolution or the protests. Yeah. All right. And um, I remember Blinken saying, well, once you invite Russia in, it's hard to get rid of. It was the, <laughs> you would think the guy was like talking to a mirror, but, uh, um, or maybe he was ignoring the mirror. It's hard to say. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> so Russia's like vampires once you let them in. Yeah. They're in. No, they're like the United States. <laughs> yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, once you invite them in, you can't get rid of them. Yeah. Just ask Iraq. All right. <laughs> uh, they have voted us out of the country, and we said, yeah, we're just going to ignore yeah, that. Like, I mean, we're not, not going you're anywhere. You're not going to make us. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so um, anyway, uh, we, you know, the Anthony Blinken says that the Russians are the same way. And, uh, what had happened, though, was that Kazakhstan invoked um, a, a security treaty that you know many of the Russian former Russian um, or Soviet uh, republics are a part of. So Kazakhstan said, "We've got a problem that's outside of our control. To you know, outside of our ability to control, we need help." Yeah. And um, and the Russians said, "Okay, we will send help," and and they did. Yeah. Uh, and the what was actually done, and and this was pretty clever, um, is that they, Kazakhstan, Kazakhstan used the Russian troops to guard important infrastructure pieces while having their own security forces actually deal with the protesters. Okay. So the protesters weren't actually facing off against Russian troops. Yeah. Which could inflame yeah, you that, know, the protests even imagine more. Imagine that couldn't help, yeah. Yeah, so, um, so it was actually uh, Kazakh forces that were fighting with Kazakhs in Kazakhstan yeah. while the Russians were literally providing, you know, security backups to important um, yeah. structures. Okay. All right. Um, and, uh, so the Russians went in, they got control of the protests and the Russians left. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> so, and so this is kind of like NATO for countries affiliated with Russia. Yeah. Okay. It's sort same, of same type uh, deal. Yeah. Sort of, but it's, 
I think it's more about internal security than external security, but okay. I, I I don't know a whole lot about it. I gotcha. Um, it's called the CSTO for anybody that wants to look it up. Okay. Um, it's I mean, something that, security treaty. I don't know. Anyway. I mean, that all makes sense. I mean, I know that the coverage, I know it was a big deal when Russia went in, in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Like they talked about, it, oh my God, like Russia's, Russia's now there in blah, 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 you know? Yeah. So. Well, and Kazakhstan's a really important place because it is nestled between China and Russia. Yeah. Um, in the same way that Iran is important because it's the, it's the gateway from Asia into the Middle East and Europe. If you don't want to go through Russia, yeah. uh, Kazakhstan is the gateway between Russia and China. Fair enough. Right? Um, and another reason to think that the U S may have been involved yeah. is, uh, and, and I, you know, I probably couldn't have stated this quite as eloquently um, as Daniel McAdams did, who's was Ron Paul's foreign policy advisor. Yeah. Um, he said, uh, "How how much would it have benefited the United States going into their negotiations with with Russia that happened right after this um, event in Kazakhstan? How much would it have benefited the U.S. Uh, going into talks with Russia to have Kazakhstan in flames?" Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And, uh, so, um, that happened, uh, at, at the same time, um, you know, I mean, what do you want to know about Ukraine? Uh, we've talked about Ukraine so many times. Yeah. Let me, let me start, I guess, with the, um, with the biggest myth here. All right. Uh, and that is, um, that Putin's about to invade Ukraine. Well, the, so the coverage we talked the other night, um, not on the podcast, but just us chatting, and I was telling you, like, so the the coverage I've seen in the mainstream media is just like that, and they there's they show all of these videos of troops lined up on the border and mm -hmm. like vehicles everywhere, and like that's that's the coverage. So that's that's what you're seeing if you just turn on the news and and watch what they're saying. Okay, is that that they're lined up on the border waiting to go in. Wait, awaiting yeah, orders to go in. To my knowledge, that's not true at all. <laughs> yeah. Um, there are, uh, certainly there's been a buildup of Russian troops in border areas. Yeah. Um, the mass of troops is a couple hundred miles actually from the border itself. Yeah. Uh, so within, they're, so they're, not, they're, they're not, they're not on the line just waiting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, there, it, it's like, Saying that um, that you're about to invade the Atlantic Ocean from Atlanta. Yeah. Okay. Right. Like, yeah. it's not like they're standing there on the shore. They're yeah. You know. Um, but and the question, I guess, is why would they be doing that? And the answer is because they're ready to defend their own territory. Yeah. Because NATO has been building up troops all around the border all this time. Okay. And. A um, bunch of the NATO countries have been uh, sending a whole lot of arms into Ukraine, yeah. including the U.S. Well, and the U.K. I mean, we're very openly doing that. So yeah. that's the other coverage I've seen is mm -hmm. is us and, and with the big airships and whatever, like delivering weapons to the Ukrainians. Like, yeah. I mean, we're very openly like weaponizing them. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, the truth is that Putin has no interest in invading Ukraine. Um he has said as much. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and if you don't take him at his word, then, you know, go back to 2015, where these two territories in Ukraine that are the focus of all this conflict uh, in the Donbass region, um, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, uh, they had plebiscites and voted to join the Russian Republic. Yeah. Or Russian Federation. What do they call themselves now? Anyway. Uh. Um and uh, at that time, it would have been very easy for Putin to say, okay, thank you. Um, you know, just go ahead and move troops in. There wouldn't have been a fight. He could just, like, yeah, just send people in, in there to say, okay, this is ours now because they, they wanted to be. Yeah. And and I'm sure it would have created some kind of international uproar, but it would have been hard for all these countries of the West that value democracy so much to say that it's unfair for him to claim territory after they voted. After that's what they wanted to do. Yeah. 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 Um, so, uh, but he said, no, he was yeah. like, no, thanks. We're, we don't want you yeah. <laughs> then. Um, yeah. so why would he invade now? Yeah. It just doesn't make any sense. Um, now there's plenty of good reasons for him not to have accepted them at the time. That was my next question is why, why was he so standoffish about taking them on? Even though, uh, I mean, obvious, the obvious that he would have 
had scrutiny. Yeah. Um, well, they're a mess uh, yeah. economically. I don't think they were in quite such a mess at the time because now they've been fighting for six more years than yeah. they had been at that time, which they'd only been fighting for a year or so yeah. um, then. Uh, maybe not even a year. But um, it's not a wealthy area of Ukraine anyway. Yeah. Um, it would have created a backlash, uh, an international backlash, even after a vote. Yeah. Um, and uh, there is some benefit to him having um, a couple of, of territories within a purportedly democratic rival yeah. that side with him. Yeah. You know, okay. to kind of balance out yeah. um, the anti-Russian, uh, you know, voters, <laughs> yeah. I guess you'd say, in Ukraine. Okay. Um, so those are a few things. I'm sure, like, he's a more brilliant statesman than I am. I'm sure he had a lot more reasons. Yeah. But those are things that I can come up with. I gotcha. Um, the, I think the real question for Americans... Uh, so I was at... Uh, I was at my dentist earlier this week, and uh, I had to wait a little while before my my dentist actually came in after my um, the my cleaning. Mm-hmm. Uh, and so I was just sitting there, and I was like, you know, looking through antiwar.com, and then I finished the article that I was reading there, and then I was just sitting thinking. And I've and so I, I was thinking about this, and then when my doctor and my uh, hygienist came back in, I said it to them. I said, okay, so I've been I've been thinking um, while I was waiting here, and what I wonder is if Americans would be more vocal in their opposition to us, uh, you know, to the sprinksmanship with between Biden and Putin over Ukraine, um, if it was presented to them in the way that it really is, yeah. like the in in a realistic manner, which is how many U.S. cities are you willing to risk? to ensure that the Ukrainian government can oppress the Russian ethnic groups in eastern Ukraine. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And I hope that answer is zero. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think when you frame it that way, it becomes zero pretty quick. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I certainly would hope so, because that's really the question. Yeah. Um, there's... There, it doesn't make any. Now, when I said this to them, they were, were like, "I don't know what you're talking about." Which, <laughs> well, and that unfortunately, <laughs> that's what you're going to get from like a large portion of of the people in this country. Like, they just, I mean, even though Ukraine and Russia has been all over the news this mm-hmm. week, like people don't know what's really going on over there. Yeah. I mean, they don't know the backstory. They don't mm-hmm. know, and and honestly, a lot of them don't even, even with it being in the media, just don't consume mainstream media and don't even know. Yeah. Or they don't care about that part. They only do local news. They don't do international news yeah. or whatever. That's true too. Yeah. Um, and and I gave them like a, a little primer on, yeah. you know, we overthrew the government in Ukraine in two thousand four, um, got rid of Yanukovych. When they held a vote a few years later, they voted him back in. Yeah. Uh, we overthrew him again in twenty fourteen. You know. Yeah. Um, and uh, and these two regions rebelled against the central government. Yeah. And so essentially what what we would be doing is that we would be aiding a government um, in imposing its will on regions that don't want them as their government. Yeah. Uh, uh, there you go. And the reason Russia is involved at all is because, um, you know, it's mostly ethnically Russian, those two areas. Uh, there are something like a hundred thousand Russian citizens, like people with Russian passports that live in, in the Donbass. Yeah. Um, and, uh, so Putin, it, like any other national leader, uh, has some obligation to protect his people, even in another country. Yeah. I mean, think about what the U S does in, in <laughs> the name of protecting its people in other countries. Uh-huh. Like you talk about U S interests. Uh, I, I promise you the, the security interests of Russia in the Ukraine are greater than the U.S. security interests in Ukraine. Oh, without question. Like, it's right there on their border. Yeah, exactly. It's their neighbor. <laughs> yeah. 
Um, and it was a part of the the Soviet Union. Yeah. <laughs> it's a, you know, another important point. Well, and it's like, so we in this country, we have issues with um, m- drugs and stuff coming from Mexico. Mm-hmm. And it, it would be the same as if China stepped in and was like, well, we're going to do something about this drug problem y'all have on your border. Yeah. It'd be like, well, like... No, why? why like, you have nothing to do with this. Like, yeah. why? Why would we allow the Chinese to come over here and, and be involved in this? And they're like, oh, well, we're going to start giving the Chinese or the Mexicans weapons. Like, yeah. you know? Well, and and it's so much like that that then you might say, oh, well, you know, China really only wants to do that so that they can push more fentanyl into the U.S. Uh, from their their own. And yeah. that's kind of how the U.S. is with these things too. It's not just exactly you know a security interest. It's also an economic interest because yeah. you know U.S. companies can benefit from yeah. from this coming from the other side of the planet <laughs> yeah um and it, it's why should you care about ukraine yeah well the truth is is you shouldn't yeah probably not i mean i, I mean we, if if we weren't if we weren't involved in this they can handle this on their own yeah at least to the well that's the other thing um one of the problems with the uh, u.s involvement in in these kind of things um, all over, as we saw, like painfully clear in Afghanistan, yeah. is that once you pull the U.S. out, they have to start negotiating. Yeah, like without the U.S. support, Ukraine has no ability to stand up against Russia, if or yeah. even to take those two regions by force yeah. that are a part of their own country. Yeah, presumably, yeah. like within their territorial border or whatever. Yeah. Um, and uh. You know, we saw it in Georgia years ago, too, um, yeah. the South Ossetia thing, uh, where the U.S. Um, made it seem like they would support and help defend Georgia. Yeah. And so Georgia launched a revolution, uh, you know, to fight off the Russians who were there as, pe- as peacekeepers, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, and uh, the U.S. didn't step in, and it became a mess, and, you know... Georgia lost big. Yeah. Um, You know, the same thing would be true in Ukraine, which is why I actually really appreciate uh, this comment by Biden. So I think what you're going to see is that Russia will be held accountable if it invades. And it depends on what it does. It's one thing if it's a minor incursion and then we end up having a fight about what to do and not do, etc. Okay. I'm perfectly content with distinguishing between an incursion and an invasion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, you know, I don't think that we should get involved regardless. They can yeah. invade for all I care. <laughs> yeah. Well, there you go. Like, yeah. They won't, uh, though. Yeah. Um, and in, in fact, even um, the... <laughs> all right. So the U.S. and a few other countries have been sending um, troops and ammunition over and, like, preparing... Oh, yeah. um, for war, I guess. Um, but there just as a point of interest, there are no NATO troops in Ukraine. Oh, really? Yeah. There's no NATO troops in Ukraine. And, uh, uh, Jens Stoltenberg, um, who's the, the NATO head. Um, he said that they have no confidence about what the Russians will do. Yeah. I mean that they, they don't have any, they said that the, well, even the Ukrainian officials said that there has been no change in their security situation since 2014. So there's yeah. nothing new here. Yeah. And um, and like I said, even the Ukrainian officials said that it was a um, it was an overreaction for U.S. to pull um, their uh, embassy um, staffs and and stuff like that out of Ukraine. Yeah, it's like nothing's changed. Yeah. Well. Something's changed because there's a whole lot of talk going back and forth. Yeah. Well, and it may be what you said in, in the first place, which is Biden's poll numbers are bad. So let's yeah. get you looking at something else. Yeah. I mean, I, I do feel like that's a, at least a factor here um, in all of this. So. Well, it certainly could be. The The thing to bear in mind is, is that question about how many U.S. cities are you willing to risk? Because there's this idea out there for some reason um, that you can have a real intense war between nuclear powers and not use nuclear weapons. Yeah. And I just don't think that that's true. It, I certainly don't have enough confidence in it to risk it. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. And 
you, you have to remember that the U S and Russia control 90% of the, of the, uh, thermonuclear weapons on this planet. Yeah. Yeah. Like more than enough to end civilization. Yeah. Many times over. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, there's just no reason to risk that. Why would you even put yourself in a position where this is a question that people have to start asking over Ukraine, over yeah. two regions in Eastern Ukraine that don't want to be a part of Ukraine to begin with? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a scary thought, man. I just, I don't understand, just like you're saying, I don't, I don't understand why it's worth it to risk this. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, these, we should be talking peace and, and, yeah. you know, just leave that part of the world alone. Like, I mean, there's, there's no reason for us to be involved in this. Mm -hmm. uh, there's no good reason for us to be involved in this. Yeah. And here's the part that I really don't understand is that like, why continue to be antagonistic with Russia and try and pick a fight with Russia when it's really clear that the the Pentagon wants to focus on China, yeah, <laughs> like, do why in the world would you want? Okay, this is what I I don't understand. Like, why would you want the resources to be stuck defending Ukraine? Right. Um. Yeah. If you want to focus on China, like, yeah. wouldn't you want those forces clear? To deal with China, if you have to, yeah. it, it doesn't make any sense. In we need to be moving those forces to Taiwan. Yeah, in any kind of strategic <laughs> way. <laughs> yeah. Um. If you if you well, consider China to be more of a threat, why would you waste resources dealing with Russia that isn't really? They're just not. Yeah. Well, it it goes back to the not realize that. They they have this I, mindset that they can fight a war on two fronts. Yeah, like I mean, if 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 it came down to it, then sure, we probably could till the mm -hmm. nukes start dropping. You know, well, yeah. Um, but it just like you're saying that strategically though, it just doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to. But but it, it goes back to this idea that we're an empire. Like mm -hmm. we're not we're not just a country anymore. We are mm -hmm. an empire now. We may not have all of these places as um as parts of the country, but we still are involved in everything that they do. Yeah. And there's no reason for us to be involved in every corner of the world. Mm -hmm. Like, and that's, but that's where we're at. Like, that's what we do. So. Yeah. Well, the U S interests are everywhere and, um, the U S interests override the interests of the local region. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, or local powers. I mean, there's no reason that Russia shouldn't expect to, oh, oh, shouldn't want to defend their own interests in their own backyard. And yeah. there's no reason that they should face opposition from the U S halfway around the world over their own interests in their own backyard. Yeah. Yeah. And beyond all of that, like the, cause that's, that's all really the important stuff, but even more mm -hmm. than that, like we're broke, man. Like, yeah. it's not like we can afford to do this. It's not mm -hmm. like we're operating on this massive surplus and we have all this extra money to go defend Ukraine. We're broke, man. Like, I mean, no, <laughs> obviously we can afford to stop using fossil fuels. Oh yeah, right. <laughs> that's that's the case. Yeah, try to run the U.S. military without fossil fuels. Yeah, that would be well, and that's I'll, I'll go back to it anytime we have this conversation. Like, if I don't, I won't have a. I don't. I won't have a conversation with anybody about um, global warming that won't address the fact that the U.S. military is the biggest polluter. Yeah. Like without question. Like I don't care who you throw. Like I mean, they they do the worst. <laughs> yeah. You've read some of those Brown studies, I guess, huh? Something, man. <laughs> yeah. I'm just saying. They're they're the cost of war studies from Brown. Yeah, studies. man. Like I mean, that's that's they're the biggest polluter, hands down. Mm -hmm. So, like, don't talk to me about my car. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, it becomes really obvious when you start, uh, you know, naming these places or, and you say, well, the, the U S has to, when you hear them talk about it and they say, well, the U S has to challenge the power of China in the South China sea and the East China Strait and the, wait, why, why? why? Yeah. <laughs> like exactly. the name of their country is in the name of the place you're talking about opposing them. I mean, like <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> I would guess that's because it's close. All right. It's I mean, my family has a cabin on South China Lake and it's in Maine. Yeah. Um, and I, I can understand the U S opposing Chinese forces on South China Lake in Maine, Yeah. <laughs> but not in the South China sea right. off the Chinese coast. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. It's it's because we're it's the empire mentality, man, and and that's 
all empires fall under debt. <laughs> mm-hmm. Like, I mean, that's well, just that's, yeah. that's just what happens. And the, to to think we're not just following right in those footsteps is just yeah. crazy. Like, it's to ignore what's going on. And that's when they had hard money. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> See, that's why we're immune. Ah, modern monetary theory. Right. Yep. You know, that's you that's, can just it, money is a construct. Yeah. You can just print it as you need it. Well, I, I'm just gonna say that. So the going back to the economics at home, like I was saying at the beginning of the podcast, man, like we're we're really feeling that whole just printing money thing. Yeah. Like that. You you would look at no. That's because of these greedy businesses that are trying to take ah, advantage. I forgot about the greedy businesses. I always yeah. forget about those guys. Yeah. The fat cats. They they just <laughs> popped up after Corona. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Exactly. They weren't greedy before. They didn't yeah. care about money before. Man. They're raising. Yeah prices that's, now that's the reason the prices are going up yeah, yeah. nothing to do with all the money we printed <laughs> big farm big farm is just killing us not pharma yeah. farm farm yeah, big farm yeah. <laughs> right it's the farmers that are killing us yeah, yeah. <laughs> big farmer big farmer <laughs> yeah well i i mean i don't know there's no way to address this except to make it clear that we don't want to be involved and um you know <laughs> The only thing you can do at this point, I think, is contact your congressmen, your senators, and say, I don't care about Ukraine, and I don't want my money going there. Yeah, yeah. And if you don't oppose it, I'm damn sure not voting for you next time. Yeah, yeah. Something's, I mean, yeah, something's got to give. If people. enough people do that, it does make a difference. Oh, absolutely, it makes a difference. It takes takes people doing it, though. Um, Yeah. And, I mean, we're... Because I'm telling you, we're knocking on the door of this one, man. Mm-hmm. Um, especially, and the thing that makes me the most nervous is is what I said at the beginning, the, the Biden's poll numbers. Yeah. And even if this isn't something that necessarily Biden wants to do, you can have your opinion of what you think Biden can't or will is and isn't capable yeah. of. Well, let me tell you what my mom said. Uh, my mom said this is an old man that's trying to show how tough he is and yeah. that that's what this is about. It could be. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, I would like to think, given everything that he's seen in his life, particularly with his good son, yeah. um, that he wouldn't be be jonesing for a war. In well, this yeah, manner. but this is the same guy that was challenging people to push up contests and so forth during the campaign. Well, there you go. <laughs> because, you know, yeah. it felt, you know, like he was being... Yeah. Talked down to as a weak person or something like that. Like he, he does well, have exactly that same that mentality. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Maybe. He has that same thing that Trump has and and I you know, I think it's worse in Biden because he's ready to like do something. Yeah. Trump talks trash. Yeah. And but that's all I ever got the impression that Trump was willing to do. Yeah. Biden doesn't have the well, capability to talk trash in the same he, way that Trump does, and Trump so he's ready to to like fight to go. Yeah. You know? And and that's something. Say what you will about Trump, but he he used talking trash as as an angle to get what he wanted. Mm-hmm. Because I mean, if you look at all of his big incidences, like with North Korea, like he talked a bunch of trash. And then he negotiated with them. Like he uses it as a negotiation ploy. Mm -hmm. But um, that's not what Biden's doing here. Like it's clear that's not what Biden's doing here. Um, And I I don't know what the end game is, but I I don't like the direction it's going. Well, and uh, you mentioned it before we got started here. Um, I, all right, it's mostly economic. Yeah. um, For American businesses, not for the American people. Yeah. um, But for American businesses. Uh, of course, this is a, a really great way to privatize public funds into uh, military contractors. Yeah. And you can get those big ticket items if you're ready to oppose Russia or China that you can't get if when you're ready to oppose a bunch of tribesmen in Afghanistan. Right. <laughs> right. A, a landlocked country like Afghanistan, you got no excuse to, you know, buy a whole bunch of carriers. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and a carrier is a big ticket item. You're, oh, yeah. you're talking tanks and big bombers and, um, and yep. stuff like that, that you just didn't, it, it was hard to justify in a, yeah, a landlocked. <laughs> yeah, in a guerrilla war in a, you know, in a, yeah. in a poor country. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, against China or Russia, there's, there's 
a way to argue for those big ticket items. Oh, we got to have this destroyer and this. Yeah. yeah, we need more and more and more. Yeah. And the crazy thing about it is that the stuff we've been developing over the last few years mostly turns out to be crap. Like yeah. the F-35 is a piece of junk. Like I can barely keep it in the air. We're yeah. selling it all over the place, but we aren't using it. Right. <laughs> um, and the what they're making over here just across the bay from us, these littoral combat ships. Yeah. Uh, I have read a whole bunch about them that says that they... they have no strategic value, yeah. and they're terrible. But they look cool. They do look cool. <laughs> but, I don't know, a little too futuristic a ship for my taste. But um, hey, You're living in the future, man. It's yeah, 2022. It's true. It's true. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, we're, we're sinking a whole bunch of... The U.S. government is sinking a whole bunch of your money into valueless crap for the military. Yeah. Yeah. Useless military garbage. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, and the other part of it is the Nord Stream two pipeline. Yeah. Uh, because that has been a, a big sticking point since its inception. Yeah. And it's done. I mean, yeah. it's really done. Like Biden gave up on it because the damn thing was through and they, he gave up on all the sanctions. Like we were sanctioning German companies yeah. for being involved because we want to stop a pipeline for natural gas between Russia and Germany that runs through Ukraine. Yeah. Um, well, under, right? Well, yeah. Yeah. But um, that they agreed on. Yeah. Like these two countries, including one of them, our NATO ally, Germany, agreed to construct this thing. Yeah. And we've been trying to stop it the whole way. And we're over here playing spoilers. Yeah. And the reason that we want to stop it is because we want them to have to buy U.S. natural gas, yeah. which is much more expensive because we got to freeze it down to liquid natural gas and then ship it across the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> send it on the boat when they mm -hmm. can just send it through a pipeline. Yeah. I, I got to kick out because I didn't know. So I've heard about this for a long time, the Nord Stream 2. Mm -hmm. And I just assumed this whole time it was being built because that was kind of the language used on the media in the media or whatever. But I, I just found out today watching the news. I was like, oh, this thing's done. They just have it turned it on. Like literally all they got to do is turn the spigot. Yeah. <laughs> but because yeah. construction's complete. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, you know, the concern is that the, that, Russia will have more leverage over Germany uh, because of this. But again, yeah. not our problem. Not our problem. Yeah. They can, they, they're all, these are all countries. They're mm -hmm. all grown ups. They can handle it. And, you know, even if you consider it our problem, the question is are you willing to fight over it? Like, like literally fight over it? <laughs> yeah. Are you really ready to get the U.S. military? Uh, in opposition to the Russian military over this? Well, and if you think that that's not something that's an option, go back to my example with China interfering with us. Because mm -hmm. you better believe if China was sticking its nose on our border, mm -hmm. that every American in this country would be ready to go fight China. Yeah. And do you think it's not the same way in Russia and Ukraine and all, any of these other places like mm -hmm. um, that the Russians aren't like, man, I'm tired of the U.S., Met pushing us around. Yeah. Like it's time to go give it to them. Yeah. And complain about Putin all you want, but you really ought to be thanking God that Putin's there. Yeah. Um, because I can't imagine like he is, he is cold and calculating and dispassionate and thank goodness for that. Or yeah. we'd have probably already been at war with Russia years ago when we killed their troops in Syria. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I remember that. That was like level heads definitely prevailed that day. Yeah. Because that could have been bad. Um, and he, he knows it's a bad call, but get some hothead in there instead of Putin. Yeah, yeah. Or, or a leader that thinks that they're they're on the block, you know, mm -hmm. that, like kind of what Biden is right now, yeah. actually. Well, you can kind of put Putin on the block through all of this, though, too. Yeah. Like if, you know, how, how much... Well, let's see. I don't know how to how to phrase this. How much stock might Putin lose in Russia if he's seen as weak to the Americans in Ukraine? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, I mean, he's got, uh, I mean, he has, he, he it, has political interests day, too. Well, yeah, at the end of the day, he has a position to hold too, you know, mm -hmm. that, I mean, you can say what you will about the, the voters in Russia, but you get the Russians in the streets over something like this. Yeah. Like he has to do something like, like and especially if they're, and, and the kind of Russians that you could end up with in the streets over this are Russians that are saying, Hey, my grandparents live 
in the Donbass. Yeah. yeah right. And, and they've got neo-Nazis that the Americans are supporting and the government in Ukraine coming in and killing their neighbors and stuff. Like, you got to get over there and help. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, get my family out of Ukraine or go protect my family. Yeah. Like, this can heat up quick. Yeah. I mean, it's this. It's definitely not something to ignore. It's something that we all need to be paying attention to, mm-hmm. and and understand. And the media is not helping you understand it. Yeah, I mean that's that's just all there is to it. The stuff you're getting from the media is just garbage on mm-hmm. this. Yeah, I mean at least parts of Europe are pulling back on this, but the U.S. is pressing forward and the U.K. is pressing forward because there yeah. are you know our, our little lapdog over there, I guess. But, exactly. Um, but it is something to be concerned about. It's not something far away that doesn't matter. Yeah, uh, it can come home really fast. Oh, and in the worst possible way. Exactly. Exactly. So, um, I mean, I guess that's all I have. I I hope that there was some insight into that. I, if you have any questions, certainly uh, you can email me at Michael at the Liberty Mike. Um, I, I I honestly just have no real concept of what the average American knows about any of this. <laughs> yeah. I just don't know. Well, that's part of the reason I was trying to kind of, you know, pull some questions and, mm-hmm. you know, get you to elaborate on some things because, because I'm not the most versed in, in foreign policy. Like yeah. I, I'll freely admit, like I do keep up, but not to the means you do. Mm-hmm. So, well, it is the most important part of the American federal government. Yeah. Um, it, it foreign policy may not seem like it, but it is the thing that has the greatest impact on your life. Yeah. In many ways, that's true. Mm-hmm. I mean, it affects the economics yeah. it, it, in a tremendous way. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, if if you don't believe that, just think about um, what the difference in the economy if we hadn't spent what was it six trillion dollars on the Middle Eastern wars over the last twenty years. Imagine if that was in the economy instead of yeah, blown just, up halfway around the world. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. A lot of money. It's a lot. Yeah, a lot of money. Just, and imagine if the money that stayed here in the U.S. was uh, was put into something more productive than building things to blow up halfway around the world. Yeah, yeah. That money could be spent way better. Yeah. Blowing up my health care money across the world. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> 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 may not be what I would choose to do with that money, but it would be better than blowing it up. <laughs> yes. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So are you ready to wrap? Yeah, I'm good, man. Okay. Uh, we're, we're trying to get back on schedule. Yeah. You know, <laughs> just life, man. Uh, Busy people, man. We got a lot going on. There's yeah. Nothing you can do about it. So uh, what we could probably, what we could probably be better about is letting people know yeah. <laughs> when we're not recording. <laughs> um, but I just don't do social media, so. Uh, maybe I can try to get on there and throw something on yeah. the page. Whenever we're canceling something, just I, I guess maybe just put a little, yeah. hey, couldn't get together, no no episode this week or something. Yeah. Uh, or with the funny, couldn't get together, with, uh, everybody email bomb Michael so that he'll just do an episode on his own over the weekend because if we don't pressure him, he'll put it off until <laughs> he doesn't do it. Hey, you know, now you're giving me ideas. Yeah. <laughs> I, I may package that with a funny meme next time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we plan to be back in a week. Um, so in the meantime, follow us on Facebook uh, you can subscribe on iTunes, Podbean, YouTube. Um, you can always visit our website at thelibertymike.com. Um, there's a bunch of old stuff there. Yep. And uh, you can email me at michael at the Liberty Mike anytime um, with information, questions, clips, stories. I don't care. Yeah. And uh, like, I feel like we have a less interactive audience than I would like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to insult you guys out there. I just I, blow Mike's email of, up, guys. Come there's on. A, there's a lot of passivity. And, yeah. You know, get involved. Yeah. Um, you can also get involved by uh, liking, sharing, telling your friends, um, commenting uh, on the social media stuff that we do actually use. Yeah. Um, And those kind of things. And I forgot to put up the podcast that I recorded over the weekend on YouTube. So I will have to get on that. (laughs) So now you got double duty. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. At least I can cue them. Um, Is that it? Anything else? I think we got it. All right. Well, uh, we plan to be back in a week um, when we finally get this right. And in the meantime, try to stay free. Life short, live free. Ciao. Later. (laughs) 